So I was responding to some comments the other day when I came across an argument against man-made climate change that comes up time and time again. And while I have touched on it in past videos, I thought it was about time that I addressed it head on. So what exactly is the argument? Well, it goes something like this. In a time of chivalry, where gallant knights joust for the favour of fair maidens, when happy peasants work and drink in the fields, and babies resemble middle-aged men, when dudes smile as they're murdered, and horses look weirdly egg-shaped from the front. It is a time when summers are long and hot, vineyards grow in England, and Greenland is fertile and warm. This is the medieval warm period, and humanity is thriving. Aside from the constant warfare, plagues, and ever-present infant mortality anyway, this is a time before science when you can be burned at the stake for exhibiting critical thought. Needless to say, climate skeptics love it, and they'll often use this era as evidence that concern over current climate change is unnecessary. After all, not only was it supposedly just as warm as today, but humanity was having a decent time of it as well. So that's pretty much the argument. The medieval warm period existed, it was as warm or warmer than today, and this was broadly a good thing for humanity. Therefore, we shouldn't be worried about the degree or so of warming that we've seen over the last century. Just don't worry about it, mate. Now, there are three major problems with this argument, and though you might be familiar with the first two, the third is often overlooked, despite being, in my opinion, the most important of the lot. So, let's get started. Okay, so the first obvious question to ask here is, how warm was the medieval warm period? Well, let's have a look at the data. Now, the medieval warm period is considered to have lasted from roughly 900 to 1300 CE. So it's not exactly a fleeting period, and there are literally hundreds, possibly thousands of studies from all over the world that attempt to reconstruct the temperatures during this time. Many of these show that temperatures were indeed comparable and in some cases warmer than they are at the present. For example, this one from central England. Indeed, data from Western Europe, Greenland, the North Atlantic, and North America all indicate warmth during this time. And the same is true for other parts of the world, including parts of Asia and Africa. So it would seem that the medieval warm period was pretty extensive, right? Well, not exactly. Because although you can find many locations that were warm back then, you can also find many areas that weren't. And to complicate matters further, not only was the warmth during this period unevenly distributed around the world, the onset and peak of the warmth also occurred at different times, depending on the location. Some areas experienced warmth earlier, some experienced it later. Clearly, we need to do more investigation. So if some areas were warm, and some areas weren't, and if the warmth occurred at different times, then the only way of truly comparing the medieval warm period to today is by looking at the planet as a whole during these times. Fortunately, multiple researchers have done just that, and you can see some of their results here. This is temperature data for the medieval warm period. Yellow, red, and orange identifies locations that were warmer than the 1961 to 1990 average. White indicates temperatures equal to that average, and blues indicate temperatures that were cooler than the average. Now, let's look at the equivalent data for today. Oh! Oh! Guess what got me? God! <laughs> You shouldn't need me to explain the difference. This was then, and this is now. Overall, the planet is clearly much warmer than it was during the Middle Ages. 20 years ago, when this argument first came up, this was harder to prove, because most available data came from the Northern Hemisphere, where the medieval warm period was particularly pronounced. But now we have far more data from around the world, and as a result, the medieval warm period has all but disappeared from the global temperature record. We found so many cool locations from that time that they've simply cancelled out most of the warm ones that we previously had. And this is a result that has been corroborated by multiple different studies, making it a very robust scientific conclusion. So no, the medieval warm period was not as warm as today, which means that we've debunked the first part of the argument. But remember, 
This is only half the argument. And while it's true that the world as a whole wasn't as hot back then, some areas were still pretty warm. And climate skeptics often use these areas as evidence that a warmer world is better. Which brings us on to our second question. Clearly, the medieval warm period wasn't as warm as some like to claim. But was it at least good for humanity? Well, kind of. For some. As many internet commenters have told me, the medieval warm period allowed the Vikings to settle and farm in Greenland, for agriculture to boom in Europe, and for grapes to be grown far further north than they can be grown today. This undoubtedly made wine more accessible, which could go some way in explaining some of the questionable art of the era. What the hell is even that? So the medieval warm period was arguably good for medieval Europe. But if you've been paying attention so far, you'll already be asking one glaringly obvious question. What about the rest of the world? Well, you'll be unsurprised to learn that once again, it's complicated. But rather than going through every region one by one, let me tell you another story from history. It is the early 12th century, and the stone city of Chaco Canyon gleams beneath the hot American sun. The ancestral Puebloans of what is now the southwestern United States have built one of the most advanced American civilizations of the era, delicately cultivating the land to grow enough food to sustain urban centers. As the medieval warm period kicks off, agriculture booms in Europe, and the golden era of Viking exploration begins. But the warmth has an altogether different effect here. Unlike Europe, this part of the world is naturally arid, and small changes in temperature have big impacts on rainfall. And now, in 1130 CE, the additional warmth triggers the beginning of a 50-year mega drought. The predictable rainfall that the Puebloans rely on disappears, and their water reserves dry up. Food shortages, famine, and forced migrations soon follow. By the time the drought subsides, the great city of Chaco Canyon is abandoned, food too scarce for its once thriving population. And over the centuries to come, multiple mega droughts continue to lay waste to the area, contributing to the collapse not only of the Puebloan civilization, but to the cultures of other indigenous Americans like the Tiwinaku of Bolivia. So, while the medieval warm period brings prosperity to the Europeans, it brings death and hunger to the Americans. Cheery stuff, I know. But hopefully it illustrates the point. Warming isn't necessarily a good thing, and can have vastly different impacts on different areas of the planet. What's worse is that the ancient homelands of the Puebloans, the southwestern United States, is still vulnerable to these kinds of mega droughts, and the data indicates that it is getting significantly drier as we speak. Given that the planet as a whole is already much hotter than it was then, and that temperatures are continuing to rise, this doesn't exactly bode well for the future. Which brings me onto the final and most important point. Are we even asking the right questions? So far, we've mostly focused on comparing the medieval warm period to the present, and we found that it was nowhere near as hot, at least for the planet as a whole. If you want to find a past period comparable in warmth to today, you have to go much further back. And if you want to know how far back that is, well, you'll have to watch my video on the topic. The important point here is that in asking these questions and making these comparisons, we've lost sight of the real cause for concern. First, while the medieval warm period was caused by natural factors, including an increase in solar energy and a decrease in volcanic eruptions, we know that current warming is caused primarily by human emissions of greenhouse gases. Second, while skeptics continue to argue about how hot the planet was in the past, the world is continuing to heat up and it's getting hotter fast. In fact, temperatures are currently rising at least 10 times faster than any prior warming events that we know about, including the warming coming out of the last glacial period 11,000 years ago. And if you look at the climate record over geologic time, the one thing that is abundantly clear is that rapid climate change is never a good thing for the ecosystems existing at the time. Rapidly changing climatic conditions are simply really hard to adapt to. In fact, it was this very realisation during my geology degree that led me to study climate change in the first place. So yeah, 
From a geologist's perspective, modern climate change is pretty damn scary. Will it result in the end of the world? No. The world will go on for billions of years to come, and life will adapt. Will it result in our eventual extinction? Probably not. But it is a possibility, particularly if we delay effective climate action. Will it cause massive problems to our civilization, like those faced by the medieval Americans? Well, that is a real risk, and the warning signs are already there. My name's Rosh, this is all about climate, and thanks for watching.